Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to force patina your copper knife scales. And a matter of fact, this should work with any of your raw copper EDC items. You only need a few different household products to do this. So sit back, relax, and let's get it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Everyday Minimalist. My name is Brandon and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to force patina your copper knife scales and or other copper EDC items. If you don't know what patina means, that's just basically the chemical process or oxidation that happens over time to bronze, copper, and other materials. Now a force patina is basically making that happen. Instead of having to wait like 10 years, you're looking at under 72 hours. Here we have two identical Wii banters that are both copper copper. Here is the patina one and this is going to be the one that we're working on. Huge shout out to House of Blades for sending out this brand new copper milled out banter. And a matter of fact, we're going to be giving this away to one of you. So stay tuned until the end to know how to enter. So this video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing this top down here in just a moment, but let's list off the things that you guys need to do this. First off, of course, you're going to need a copper knife. Make sure that it's going to be 100% copper and not just plated. Not even sure if copper plating is even a thing but yeah just make sure it's raw copper because this will not work if it's not the next thing you're gonna have to grab is some ammonia i think i got mine at home depot for like six to ten dollars and this is actually the lemon scented version it's the hdx brand i believe that's a home depot brand you can find these off the shelf like i said at your local hardware store next up grab yourself an airtight container this is going to be super important because we don't want that ammonia just spreading throughout your house and you can pick these up at costco walmart for a few dollars make sure that you guys have the proper tools to disassemble your knife. If you don't already have a set, I'll be leaving an Amazon link in the description below, and these should be relatively budget friendly. After that, grab yourself some aluminum foil. You don't need a ton of it, as well as some paper towels. Of course, we want to stay super safe when we're dealing with these chemicals, so grab yourself a couple rubber gloves. You can grab these while you're getting the ammonia. We just want to make sure that our skin doesn't make contact with it. Next up, you'll need some sea salt. The one that I use is going to be the Morton's brand natural sea salt that works absolutely perfectly for this. Now the next couple things are going to be optional if you want that really good finish. The first item is going to be the KPL rust eraser. These are like $12. Again, I'll be leaving a link in the description below, but this just really polishes up your copper scales before you do it and afterwards. After that, we've got this clear coat spray paint. This is the Rust-Oleum brand. It's a stops rust on there, crystal clear enamel, but it will really help emphasize that blue and green that we're trying to go for. On top of that, it'll make your force patina just last that much longer. Let's go ahead and change the camera view to the top down view and show you guys how to do this. Here's all that stuff that you guys are going to need. And then here is the raw Wii banter. So this thing has not been finished yet whatsoever. And then this is kind of like the end result that we are going for. So we're trying to get this really nice aqua teal, kind of make it look like there's an ocean within a knife. If you guys are following along with the Wii Banter, this is a T8 screw. There's another T8 torque screw there as well, and then two T6s holding in the pocket clip. This thing is actually really easy to disassemble. So we're gonna go ahead and start off by disassembling this thing. So this pivot again is a T8, super easy to take apart. Make sure that you guys, if you've never done this before in the past, make sure that you're staying organized with your screw placement and know where they go. I've lost some before, trust me, I've heard it in all the live streams. These screws are gonna be disassembled from the knife for a few days. I just wanna make sure that you guys don't lose them. All right, so now that we've got those screws taken apart, you can then remove the scale. You wanna be super careful when you're doing this so you don't cut yourself but essentially you just want to wiggle this off a little bit and this should come right off along with the liners. Check that out. Here's that milling pattern that House of Blades did on this House of Blade exclusive banter. This is actually the same exact price as this, which is absolutely insane because CNC machines are not cheap to operate. So now we've got the locking side scale taken apart. We're going to remove this liner here, set that aside. Let's take out the blade completely. So I'm going to go for this finish. I'm not sure if it's even possible because on the last banter, I didn't even do this this but essentially what we're going to do is remove all this stuff here including the pivot we want to take out the remaining bearing and then also these other t8 screws here on the show side scale 
If you want, you can just use your fingers to hold in place that backspacer. You might need to wiggle out the screw a little bit, not a problem at all. And then also remove this side. So it should be pretty straightforward. And what I'm gonna do is basically screw these in so that way we don't lose these specific screws. It just makes it a little bit easier. Just one extra step that can really prevent you from having a really bad day, to be completely honest. I'm gonna use my T6 bit to nudge this thing out. It can be a tight squeeze. Now you should be left with a couple bare copper scales. And a matter of fact, I don't wanna lose any of my parts. So I'm gonna be using this tray from the Cheat Sheet Pro over at JRW. Jamie makes some pretty cool stuff and this is a great way to make it so that you don't lose any parts while you're doing this. Voila, now screws can't roll off the table and everything is gonna be good to set aside for now. So this next thing I'm gonna be doing is gonna be pretty optional and I just have this really small cheese slash cutting board here. I'm just gonna go ahead and work away this finish that's already on there. It looks like it was a stonewash finish, but we want it to look like that. I'm gonna take my KPL rust eraser and see if we can start getting that really nice finish. And this is gonna take a second, so hopefully I can just time lapse this. It can get pretty intense. Oh, actually, you know what? It's already working pretty well. And I am applying a significant amount of force. The racer is not made to do this, but I found that it works out really well. I mean, as you can tell, it's already that much more shiny. Here it is next to the other one, and that's how far we've progressed in a few minutes. And it should start looking pretty good. This is pretty much like a fast way to polish some copper, I guess. So I'm doing this in a linear pattern, so that way you don't scuff it up and then make it look like there's swirls inside it. So here's the finish removed and then not removed. I'm not gonna make you guys watch this entire thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick and then we'll be right back. Just check these things out. They are now looking very nice. Um, there is still a bunch of this KPL eraser on it, so I'm gonna run over to the sink and run some water through them and then wipe them off with the paper towel and I'll be right back. All right, these bad boys are now cleaned off and ready to go into the bath. So next, what you're gonna wanna do is basically get your plastic container, grab a few pieces of paper towels, depending on how big your container is, this isn't too bad. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start folding these so that way it can start absorbing the ammonia. I'll probably just do it like that right here. Next, what we're gonna do is grab this foil here and then what we're pretty much doing is building a suspension system so the scales can actually set on top of it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is fold these over like this. And we kind of want some thick layers so that way it can hold up the scales without issue. I'm thinking that we do two of these on each end. So I'm just gonna fold this in half down the middle like that. And we're just gonna rip it down the middle like this. So that way when it's set up, we can actually fold this over like so. Same thing with the bottom. And then we can simply just rest the scales on top and it should work out just fine. Now let's just do a quick test fit before we apply the ammonia. Seems like we need quite a bit more slack. So I'm actually gonna back this off a little bit and then just give it some slack here. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to trap the vapors at the top of the container and then cause that oxidation to happen. This is just barely suspended. And yep, it looks like we've got some space. So this should be a really good setup. And then start poking holes in this so it has a little bit more breathing room for those vapors to kind of raise to the top. So this towel is actually a little bit too close to the foil. So let's just do it like this. Two sheets, and then we're just gonna fold it down. The ammonia should compact this just a tad. Go ahead, put on your gloves so that way you don't have any chemicals hitting your skin. Take your ammonia. So again, this is the HDX lemon scent ammonia and it actually works pretty well. This stuff is extremely strong, so you don't wanna breathe this stuff in. Try holding your breath or wear a mask. And what we're doing is we're just adding in some ammonia into the container. Okay, uh, let's do a little bit more. So I did enough so that it's just like a small puddle inside the container. <coughs> Holy shit. It's been a while since I've done this, guys. That stuff is like eye-watering, so be very careful when you're doing this. And we're just gonna go ahead and put our suspension system in here that we made out of the tin foil, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of space. Okay, now we can go ahead and throw in the scales. So what you're gonna do is just basically rest these bad boys on top. Now that those are resting on top, we're gonna take our sea salt here. And I actually have the natural sea salt from Morton's. I think it's like $3 at Target or wherever. Probably better if I do it in my hand and then start pinching it like this. 
spread it on top. Don't go super heavy on this, guys, because the heavier it is, the less of an effect it's actually gonna make on the knife. So we're just doing some pretty light layers. Now what I'm gonna do is just grab a little bit of ammonia. I'm gonna take a paper towel and just kind of dab it in there, soak it completely, and then just let it drip on top like this. Another reason why you should get yourself a pair of gloves. This stuff is so strong. Okay, we have everything set up to the point where we can just go ahead and close the lid. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just go ahead and clamp this in. So we're gonna let this sit here for about 48 to 72 hours. It'll be really tempting to just open up this lid and then check out the actual scales and see how they're doing. But the longer you wait, the better the results. Essentially, when you go to lift up the lid and check on it, it's gonna let all of those important vapors letting the oxidation happen escape and then it's gonna have to rebuild that vaporization. And the last time I did this, these pieces of foil actually corroded and the scales dropped into the ammonia. And that's no big deal. If that happens to you guys, don't stress out, just let it sit. You gotta be really patient with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit for about 48 to 72 hours, which is two to three days. And then we'll come back and see what this is looking like. Let's give it some time and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, we are back. So this is after 24 hours, a matter of fact. So it seems like that KPL rust eraser, this thing right here, did a lot of really good work. This actually expedited the process quite a bit faster, which is really good to see. Let's go ahead and open this up and look at these scales, holy cow. These things are looking immaculate. This is exactly what we've been going for this entire time, just to get that really crazy force patina. Oh my goodness, this is seriously, so much better than even the other banter that I did. So I've actually already prepared this. You guys can do this in a sink and all you need to do is pretty much rinse these off. I'm gonna let mine sit in the water for a few seconds here. I'm gonna let this kind of dissolve inside the water. Oh my goodness, just check this out. Once these things dry off, it's gonna look even better. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lightly pat down the scales with another paper towel. So I'm just gonna pat it down again, just like this. You'll see a lot of that blue kind of just get removed, which is completely fine. Ensure that the pivot is still gonna be okay. So I'm gonna take this paper towel, just kind of rub it on the inside of the pivot because we don't want any corrosion happening there. Otherwise it's gonna affect the performance of the knife. We wanna make that as clean as possible. So a lot of the tutorials I've seen will just have you stop here. I'm gonna take it to the next level and show you guys how I got mine to look so crispy. So I just ran a quick test and before I actually apply the clear coats, we're gonna go ahead and use the KPL eraser again to see if I can bring this original copper back to life without having to do it after the fact. The last time I did this, I essentially put the clear coats on and then I use the eraser, but I really want this one to really pop out. So what we're going to do is just simply erase out some of these parts and bring back that original copper finish. And it's pretty much just erasing pencil off of paper, really simplistic here. I do really want this to pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these edges off. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to get this copper line back around the entire knife. It's kind of like a border. Sweet, this video is already super long. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this skill as well. And then we'll be outside putting on the clear coat. Here's a quick before and after. I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, so we're back. Oh my goodness, guys, check out these scales. They're literally glowing. And these turned out better than I thought. So the next and last final step, aside from assembling the knife, is to basically take your KPL eraser, do some really light passes across the scale. And we're just trying to smooth this out as much as possible. We're just taking off a really small amount of that clear coat. This will also get rid of that really stenchy spray paint smell that we all hate. These are just really light passes over the clear coat to kind of give it a little bit more of a matte texture versus the super glossy texture that you would see right after it's spray painted. As you can tell, it's not as glossy as this one. And I like that look personally a little bit more. Of course, you can just leave the clear coat on there and it'll be completely fine. I know this was a super long video, guys. I appreciate it if you've made it this far. If you guys like this content, throw me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and just time lapse this reassembly, show you guys what the end product looks like. Guys, 
The Shipwrecked Banter V2 is finally done. I know that was a super grueling video, but I hope it really did help you guys. I did a few different things in comparison to what I did last time on my original Shipwrecked Banter. And you'll notice how much more this one pops out in comparison. I completely changed my mind on just recommending the KPL Rust Eraser. If you want this type of finish, you must have the KPL Rust Eraser. Not only did it help me polish that stock finish, it also expedited the time it took to get this finish and result. As I was saying earlier, it usually takes 48 to 72 hours. That's kind of the result that I had with this one if you're just using the stock finish. But when you use a KPL eraser, that oxidation will happen in under 24 hours. I know I have been keeping you guys waiting way too long, so let's tell you about how you're gonna win this knife specifically. Huge shout outs to House of Blades for sending this one out. And they just wanted to give back to our community. I also wanna give back to you guys. So one of you guys are gonna be able to win this. And here are the rules. All you have to do is follow House of Blades on Instagram as well as my account, Everyday Minimalist. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and then leave a comment below. Tell me what you love about my channel and how you found it. Be sure that you're not spamming those comments because that will throw a flag to YouTube and they'll probably just take down your comments and you'll be disqualified. I definitely don't want that happening to you. You have to be located in the United States and be 18 or older to enter. Now there have been a lot of spam comments going around. I'm not going to be responding to you guys directly in the comments. I'll be picking the winner live on stream on September 16th, so make sure that you guys are there. Also have those notifications on so you know when I do go live, we do hang out all the time. We have an awesome community on the live stream and I'd love to chat it up with you guys. Huge shout outs to my patrons as well as return subscribers. This would not be a thing without you guys. And aside from that, thank you guys so much for spending your time with me today and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.